Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you some fantasy retelling recommendations. I actually think this is the first recommendations video that I've done on my channel, which is very strange to think because I've been on this channel for two years and I've never recommended you anything, so I'm sorry. <laughs> The main purpose of me doing this video is because of the Mythic Readathon, which if you haven't heard of then I will leave a link to the announcement video down below. But basically I will be co-hosting a readathon with Charlotte over at Bookmarks and Vlogging, which is taking place between the 5th and the 18th of August and focusing on fantasy retellings of mythology, folklore or fairy tales. But even if you don't want to take part in the readathon, which you definitely should because there's still time to make a TBR. Hopefully you will enjoy this video just for the recommendations because I'm going to be talking about 14 books I think. So there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> I will say right now that we definitely do not expect you to go out and buy books for the readathon. Please do check your libraries to see if they have any books in stock or see if your friends have the books. Just please don't go spending loads of money if you don't have the money or if you don't want to. We just want to encourage people reading retellings, which sounds very daunting, but I promise you that if you do like fantasy, then you've probably read more retellings than you realise. But because we have created a bingo board of challenges, Charlotte and I have both decided to make recommendations videos, assigning one book per challenge and also a few extras as well. Both of these videos are going up on the same day, which means if you're watching this, then Charlotte's should also be up, which I will leave in the description box. And this video will also include my TBR towards the end, so definitely stay tuned until the end because there's even more recommendations there. And even though I have assigned one book per challenge, one book can equal up to three challenges in this readathon, so I will also mention the other challenges that apply for each book. So, long-winded introduction aside, let's get into it. So to quickly run through the challenges so that you actually know what I'm talking about in this video, the challenges are to read a book that's over 400 pages, read a host recommendation, read a book that has an animal on the cover, read a book that has green or yellow on the cover, read the book of the month for Myth Take, read a book that's written by a woman, read a book that's written by a person of colour, read a book that has Asian influences, and read a book that is a myth retelling. So starting with the book that is over 400 pages. I had to do it guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to go for the go hard or go home approach, then I recommend The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is one of my favourite books and you are well within the over 400 page limit because this is over 800 pages. <laughs> Obviously this is going to be a bit daunting to read within two weeks but there is an audiobook to help out if you want it. This is a feminist fantasy retelling of the St George and the Dragon legend from English folklore. It follows multiple perspectives but I guess the main kind of plotline is that this is set in a queendom where Queen Sabran rules and her ancestors actually kind of dealt with this dragon problem way back when and defeated the dragons and in doing so the dragons will remain asleep until this family line is eradicated basically. And so that means there is a lot of pressure for Queen Sabran to produce an heir to keep the family line going but she doesn't want to. There are also other perspectives in this, for instance there's one who is a dragon rider and there's one who is basically a grumpy old alchemist. <laughs> I will never not try and get people to read Priory, so I had to do this. This one will also fit for the challenges to read a book with an animal on the cover, with yellow on the cover, written by a woman, and with Asian influences. However, there are more books in this video that have over 400 pages, but not quite as extreme as this, so don't worry, I've still got you covered. <laughs> So the next challenge is to read a host recommendation and I'm not going to set a book for this because that basically means that you take any book that is mentioned in either this video or Charlotte's recommendations video so you know pick one off here, pick one off Charlotte's and you're fine. <laughs> so next up we have the challenge to read a book with an animal on the cover and for this one I'm choosing The Sisters of the Winterwood by Rena Rossner. Now I haven't actually read this one, it's more of a suggestion than a recommendation but it won't be that way for long and you'll see why soon. <laughs> First of all, how stunning is this cover? But as you can see, there's a swan and a bear on the cover, so that's why I chose it for this challenge. So this follows two sisters called Libba and Leia, who live a very comfortable life until a band of mysterious men enter their remote village, and since that moment, Leia gets a spell put on her. After this event, they also find out that their family holds a secret magical heritage, and all the old fairy tales are true, and can very much save them. Now what's interesting about this book is that half of it is written in what looks like poetry. So the perspective of Leia is written like this and I think this is why it will be perfect for the readathon because it should be a really quick read when half of it isn't written in entire pages. Now as I mentioned in the blurb it is said that Leia is put under a spell and I'm wondering if that has something to do with it because it's a fairy tale trope that a lot of people get put under spells that mean they can only speak in song or poetry 
and I'm wondering if that has something to do with it but also that does start from the very beginning so I'm not quite sure if it will be but either way it does look like it will be a very quick read. This is based off Slavic folklore and Jewish mythology but also has a lot of tie-ins with Greek mythology so Leder and the Swan for instance and also is said to be a retelling of Christina Rossetti's The Goblin Market so there really is everything inside this one but I'm pretty sure it is primarily Slavic and Jewish mythology. This one will also fit the challenges to read a book with yellow on the cover, read a book that is written by a woman and also a mythology retelling. Also Madeline Miller has said that it is luscious and hypnotic so the Queen has spoken. <laughs> for a book that has green or yellow on the cover I've decided to go for Silver in the Wood by Emily Tesh. This is a relatively new release and it's a male-male romance retelling the myth of the green man which is a folktale that's seen in a lot of Europe but I know it primarily from England because that's where I am. <laughs> and there's not much more to say about this because it is absolutely tiny. It's barely a hundred pages and so perfect for a readathon. It does have green and yellow on the cover. I haven't yet read this one but I do think I will be reading it before July finishes so I might have read it by the time this video goes up. Who knows? But I do think this one would be a good choice for the readathon and it also fits the challenge to read a book that's written by a woman. And then we get to the middle challenge which is to read the mythic book of the month and this challenge is actually worth double points and the book we've chosen actually does fit a lot of prompts so this could be a good shout for your TBR if you're looking for something that can do a bit of everything. <laughs> so the Mythotate book of the month for August is The Hand, the Eye and the Heart by Zoe Marriott. This is a Mulan retelling and like with most Mulan retellings it involves a girl taking the place of her father and going into war. I believe this is also non-binary, it's not on voices in terms of race, I don't know how the author identifies herself in terms of gender, so it is a shame that it's not on voices but hopefully it will still be a good read. But aside from the book of the month challenge this will also fit in with a book that's over 400 pages, a book that has yellow on the cover, a book that has an animal on the cover and a book that has Asian influences. So if you do decide to join us with the mythic book of the month then it is possible to gain yourself 40 points and tick off three challenges just from one book. <laughs> However, this is where the alternatives come in because if you have already read The Hand, the Eye and the Heart or you just can't get hold of it for whatever reason, then we're also giving you the option to read a previous mythic read. So you can also choose out of the following four books. I'm not going to explain what these are about but I will leave the links down in the description box and I also do have vlogs for each of these books which are spoiler free so I will leave them down below and you're perfectly fine to watch them if you haven't read them already. So the first myth to take read was The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson and this could also do the challenge of green and yellow on the cover, an animal on the cover, written by a woman and written by a person of colour. Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier, which is over 400 pages, has an animal on the cover and is written by a woman. The City of Brass, which is over 400 pages, has yellow on the cover and is written by a woman. And also Circe, which has an animal on the cover, is written by a woman and is a myth retelling. So any of those five books that have just been mentioned will gain you the double points for that challenge. Next up we have a book that is written by a woman and while I think all of these books in this video are written by women, which is incredible. I am specifically recommending Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan for this one. This is a collection of short stories that are fairy tale retellings focusing in on the heroines of the story. They're quite dark and witchy and I just absolutely loved them. This is also about 150 pages long and includes some beautiful illustrations. I highly highly recommend this one if you love fairy tale retellings and you just want something quick. This one would also fit the challenge to read a book with an animal on the cover. For well, the challenge to read a book that's written by a person of colour, for this one I'm going for Oh My Gods by Alexandra Shepherd. This one is based off Greek mythology and follows Helen who is kind of forced to move to London to live with her father's side of the family. However, her father is Zeus and so all of her family on that side are Greek gods. She has to keep that a secret when she starts at a new school. This is on the younger side of YA but it's such a fun read. I read this back in January I think and I flew through it. You definitely do have to take it with a pinch of salt because like I said it is for a younger audience but it's just it's so light-hearted and fun and I just really enjoyed reading it. So I would highly recommend this one for the readathon as well because you'll read it in no time. <laughs> this one will also fit the challenges to read a book with yellow on the cover, read a book that's written by a woman and read a book that is a myth retelling. So the next two books that I'm going to mention I don't actually own and I haven't read them yet but I do want to recommend them because they both sound amazing. So for the challenge to read a book that has Asian influences I'm going to recommend Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This one is dubbed as Project Runway meets Mulan which is quite a mix <laughs> but it does sound incredible because 
The main character is a young girl who has always wanted to become a professional tailor, but she cannot do so because she is female. However, when the king's tailor is unable to work anymore and her father is summoned to take his place, she actually stands in, poses as a boy and becomes one of the imperial tailors. However, this position is really competitive and so there's a lot of backstabbing as people kind of compete against each other. And then it becomes even more difficult when she actually catches the eye of the court magician and also when the final challenge is two, and I quote, So three magic gowns from the laughter of the sun, the tears of the moon, and the blood of the stars. There are just so many things mashed into that synopsis that I'm just like, I need to know how this works. So while this isn't a recommendation because I haven't read it yet, I do think it sounds incredible and I do want to get my hands on it pretty soon. And this also fits into the challenges to read a book with an animal on the cover, read a book with yellow on the cover, read a book that's written by a woman, and read a book that's written by a person of colour. I definitely need to get used to saying B-A-M-E author because I feel like that explains it better. I'll bear that in mind next time. <laughs> and so for the final challenge, but don't click off yet because I do still have my TBR coming, the final challenge is to read a book that is a myth retelling and I'm aware that some people have been slightly confused by this challenge because we have said that all of the books in this readathon have to be myth, folklore or fairy tale retellings and so this challenge seems a bit redundant. However, mythology, folklore and fairy tale are all very separate things. So how mythology differs from the other two is that it has a base of religion to it. So basically anything that mentions gods. <laughs> the main ones that come to mind are things like Greek mythology, Norse mythology, Egyptian mythology, Jewish mythology, Hindu mythology, anything like that. You'll be good to go. So the one that I'm suggesting for this one, again, it's not one that I've read, but I do think it sounds really good, is Loki by Mike Fasick. I can't give much of an explanation for this because it's literally a retelling of Loki, the god of mischief. <laughs> but this one is pretty short, so it could be a good one for the readathon if you fancy something that's Norse mythology related. And it also has an animal on the cover, so it can suit for that challenge as well. So now moving on to my TBR. I did originally just have three books on my TBR because those three books each suit three challenges and so I've completed the bingo board if I managed to read these three books. However, I have also added a fourth book to that list if I can manage it for reasons that I will explain when I get to it. So the first one will obviously be the Hand the Eye and the Heart because this is the book of the month. I'm one of the hosts, I need to read it. But the three challenges that I'm using this for will be the book of the month, a book with yellow on the cover and a book with Asian influences. The other book that I've already mentioned is The Sisters of the Winterwood. I bet absolutely nobody got that hint when I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> but the three challenges for this one is to read a book that has an animal on the cover, to read a book that is written by a woman and a mythology retelling. Onto the books that I haven't mentioned yet, I will be reading Wicked Fox by Kacho. This follows an 18 year old girl who also happens to be a gummy hoe, which is a nine tailed fox who feeds off the energy of men. <laughs> However, she loses her fox bead, which is the thing she needs to feed, and so she has to get this back before she starves, essentially. This also involves a romance, as you can probably tell from the cover. And even though this is quite a big book, I've been told this is a fast read. So this book I'm choosing for my host recommendation challenge because this will be mentioned in Charlotte's video, and I'm also using it for the reader book that's over 400 pages and the reader book that's written by a person of colour. This can also fit more challenges such as reader book that has Asian influences, and also I guess reader book that has an animal on the cover because she's a nine-tailed fox and you can see the fox tail. So I guess that counts. <laughs> But I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. It sounds so good. And then the final book that I have on my TBR and will be mentioning in this video is the one that I added on because we have kind of almost teamed up with Brit over at Basically Brit for her next 24 hour readathon. So she does host the Basically Readathon. If you are taking part in the Mythic Readathon and also take part in the Basically Readathon on the 10th of August, then you will gain extra points. Now Brit does set the challenge to read a book that's on your TBR for ages, but it doesn't really matter what you do with the challenges. You can either just carry on with your Mythic challenges, you can just do Brit's challenge and not have it apply for Mythic, or you can combine the two if you want to. But if you just take part in both readathons at the same time, then you will gain extra points. Basically your aim is just to read as much as you can within that 24 hours. Obviously you can sleep and things, but just read as much as you can within the time that you have during that 24 hours. I do plan on taking part in the 24 hours and I want to try and finish a book within 24 hours. So the book that I've chosen is A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. This is a Greek myth retelling following the Trojan War from the women's perspective, but I believe it follows quite a few different types of women. So I'm very intrigued to see what this is like. I've been wanting to read it for the longest time. I'm slightly intimidated because 
I know Greek myth retellings tend to be a bit of a slow pace, so I don't know if I will be able to finish this within 24 hours. But I did decide to just throw this in as an extra read on top of my TBR because it's a myth take book and I've been meaning to read it for ages, so why not? <laughs> But this can also do quite a few challenges, such as written by a woman, the final cover has yellow on the cover, and it is a myth retelling. Probably some others as well, but yeah. <laughs> so those are all the books that I'm going to talk about in this video. Hopefully you found something there that you might enjoy. Remember as well that Charlotte also has a recommendations and TBR video up today, so I will leave a link to that down below. You now have plenty to choose from for the host recommendations challenge between my video and Charlotte's video, but if you still want help with your TBR, if there's a book that you come across that you might want to read but you don't know if it counts, or if you just want to find something else different, then you can message either me or Charlotte or the MythTech account. We really want to see your TBRs, so please do tweet us, either a photo or just a list or you can kind of edit the bingo board to have the pictures on or cross them off. Whatever you do please just tweet us or you know tag us on Instagram things like that. Please show us your TBRs because we're so excited to see them. <laughs> and remember to use the hashtag mythic readathon for all your updates but as for now I think that's enough talking so I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like and subscribe and all that fun stuff if you did. I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.